Hello YouTube, um, I'm, my name is Mike Dodge. I'm going to be doing a series of videos documenting me grinding and polishing a 12 and a half inch telescope mirror for a Newtonian telescope. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. If you need a more in-depth tutorial, I would I would search for names like Francis J. O'Reilly and Gordon Waite in YouTube. Uh, there is, they have much more experience than I do. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the tool I'm going to be use, which is an eight-inch tile tool. This one right here. It's made. I make mine out of plaster of Paris. A lot of people use dental stone or, or dental plaster, but I haven't found a source for that yet. Um, I use plaster of Paris, which is really cheap, and you can find it at any Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, if you do use plaster of Paris, make sure it's it's weatherproof. I waterproof. I, I use a, a latex paint just to keep the water out of mine, but I live in Arizona and really low humidity and I've never had a problem with, with water damaging these. Um, I'm going to be using a fixed post mirror grinder that I just completed. Still learning about. This is one I, I made. Its capacity is a 20 inch mirror. I don't, I don't think I'll get up that high, but um, this one is basically a ripoff of Gordon Waits. I've watched his videos a million times and made my own. Uh, should save some time in, in, in grinding and, and hogging out this uh, mirror blank of mine. Um, when you when you are planning on grinding or polishing a mirror, you want to make sure that your work area is clean and organized. I've learned that the hard way. Uh, any piece of stray dust or or dirt will scratch or 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 chip your your mirror. Um, I do mine in, in my garage and try to the best of my ability to keep it clean. Um, I'm using this grinder, but it's by no means the only way to grind a mirror. The first couple mirrors I've done were by hand, and they take a long time. A lot of, a lot of uh, manpower, I guess. So hopefully this mirror grinder will work out for me. And so far it has. Here's a little bit more on my tool. As you can see, I use about one inch square glass tiles. You can get them in a 12 inch by 12 inch mat at your hardware store. Uh, I epoxy them to the surface of this plaster tool after I've waterproofed it. I waterproof with either uh, marine varnish or or um, paint, latex paint or spray paint, really. Uh, again, I do live in Arizona, so I really don't have a problem with things rotting or or water stain very long after it's dry. Um, this one is coated with the three or four coats of white semi-gloss spray paint. Uh, the hole in the back of this one is for the post, the guide post in my grinder to fit in. And that fitting is just a, I think, uh, three quarters hexagonal pipe fitting. It works just great. This tool was an older tool of mine. This one's coated in the varnish I was talking about. I used this one for a couple months in zero deterioration, and it's as 
This is plaster, plaster of Paris, and a larger one. Uh, this is my grit. I keep them in mason jars just to keep it nice and organized and separated. Uh, organization and, and neatness and cleanliness is key when you're grinding or polishing a mirror. Uh, I use a old gravy, old gravy container to disperse my my grit on my mirror and the water bottle. This is my newly completed mirror grinding machine. It's a fixed post type of um, grinder. Uh, I think some people call it spin grinding or, or spin grinder. Um, it's different from the Miromatic type in that the the uh, tool is stationary during the grinding. Uh, this one is just made out of a plywood box with an AC motor in it and a worm drive, a 60 to 1 worm drive and, and a turntable. Really basic. It has three speeds. Uh, I don't know the exact speeds but around 20 RPM. Well, yeah, around 10 to 10 RPM up, up to about 50 RPM. Um, let me turn it on here. It runs pretty smooth. Hopefully that... I've seen ones that run smoother. Hopefully that won't affect my mirror in the end. We'll see. The uh, arm above it is fully adjustable. It can be moved into any position that I want or need. Uh, hopefully that works out for me. Um, the reason I made this this uh, grinder is because of me being lazy and not wanting to walk around the barrel uh, for extended periods of time. Another weapon in my mirror grinding arsenal is a spherometer. Everybody needs some sort of measuring device to see how deep um, your your curve is or a sagitta and it, it can either be a straight rule and a filler gauge or you can get more technical and use a dial indicator and make a spherometer. Um, Gordon Waite has a great video on how to make and calculate and Calibrate your a spherometer. They can make they can be made out of virtually anything old pulleys gears um, I machine mine out of aluminum uh, I have a Cheap Chinese dial indicator, which is fairly accurate Let's See that there you go It's pretty accurate to about a thousandth of an inch um, I've epoxied three ball bearings on the bottom here and what this does is tell you how deep your curve is on your mirror. Um, if you're going to use a spherometer like this you're going to need a reference surface to zero it initially so you can compare this zero reading with the depth of your curve and I just happen to have a surface plate made for that. You could use anything else, an old granite countertop or another flat or anything fairly flat will work. And this is my 12 and a half inch blank. Uh, I've just started to hog out the center of it and I will get to that uh, soon. The It's a pretty thin mirror. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, hopefully I don't have any problems with astigmatism. I don't know. I've been trying to avoid that since the beginning and will throughout. Um, if you have any questions or comments or constructive criticism or advice or even any ideas, please feel free to comment. Uh, I monitor my comments on my videos uh, pretty well and I, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, see you in the next video.